let's talk now about what it means to be a really good change agent. Those that assume this role within their organizations, of course, must have a lot of discrete skills and attributes, some things like patience and determination, humility, confidence and honesty. Another element that comes into, into play is an understanding of the basics of human psychology. And for that, our newest contributor, Kelly Graves, is uniquely positioned with some great insights and advice. Kelly is a consultant and change agent who uses his background in psychology to help organizations work through the communication issues that may be preventing them from achieving their highest levels of success. His latest article, actually the second part of the building blocks of organizational psychology, ran in Tuesday's issue of QDD. And in it, Kelly tackles how change agents can help turn concepts and plans into actions and behaviors. So to chat further about this topic, we're pleased now to welcome Kelly Graves to the show. Kelly. Thanks again for joining us here in the studio. Good Thank to see you for you, having man. me Thank back. You. I appreciate yeah, it. Sir. Thank you yeah. for having us, for, for, for us having you, I guess. Yes. Well, all right, so the building blocks. Okay. Part one, we talked about overcoming fear. Mm -hmm. So here in part two, we talk about how you help to people to, uh, to overcome fear and then actually make changes and turn those changes, those planned changes, into action. So how do you overcome then the resistance to, to doing that? How do you ha help people actually turn plans into action? Well, it starts with um, involving them. Mm -hmm. And Jacob Stoller mentioned it, a uh, previous person mm -hmm. that you had, you know, mentioned it. And the real key is involving people. And they have the answers if we ask them, hey, we've got a problem here. Right. What are your ideas? Mm -hmm. These are my ideas. Mm -hmm. And so that's basically how I approach it. Right. Well, what, I mean, so, but, but I mean, when you, when you dig into that, like, for mm -hmm. instance, you had a really good case study in the piece right. about uh, a mining. Uh, supplier. They, they mm -hmm. were making um, uh, teeth for, uh, for mining uh, right. chains, I guess. Mm -hmm. And uh, they had a problem with their quenching process, right? right. It, was, it, mm -hmm. was a, it was a typical type of problem that needed to be figured out, but then they understood it and then they needed to implement it among right. the workforce. And that, that was, there were some, some bottlenecks with that. So what did, how did that work out? It's a real challenge. Um, there was quite a few bottlenecks and you know if we go if we step back a little bit the bottlenecks start because there isn't clear communication in the beginning so you have a management employee structure where management says we know all the answers the employees are just supposed to work right okay right. and that's the furthest from the truth so what we had to do there is change the whole dynamic and say okay we have a problem that we think is in the quench area okay mm -hmm. we're we're having too many um too much scrap, and it was an extensive amount of scrap. And so they just had to grab it by the horns and say, okay, what are your ideas, employees? These are our ideas, what is relevant? And the first problem that came up was very easy. We need to have a, uh, um, a timer. Yeah. And I had talked to the employees about this, and they said, we've been asking for a timer for six months, and I'm going, Pfft. Let's order a damn timer. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, it, it's, it's 80 or 100 bucks, yeah. you know, yeah. and we're flushing thousands. So that was the first one. Um, but then it was we needed to look at the actual quench tank and the, uh, the solution that was in there. Mm -hmm. The hard part in organizational change is taking the ideas and actually saying we need to do something different mm -hmm. and creating that new behavior. Mm -hmm. And that's hard because people are used to the old behavior. So saying, what is that new behavior going to be? Yeah. And then looking at it each day and making the adjustments, making the improvements. And that's the real key to any kind of change within an organization is having a plan. Yeah. What new behavior do we need to do? Adjust that. And then once you get that, then now let's create a habit. So that becomes normal. But there's a challenge within that. So that's what you really have to work through is your um, becoming uh, really wanting to create change, I guess. Mm -hmm. Well, let, let me follow up on that a little bit. I mean, so let's talk about the timer, because okay. that, that, that seems silly, and yet I think that happens a lot. Tons. Why, why Tons. I mean, did management not know that they needed a timer? Did the, commu did the employees not communicate to management? Was management so tight-fisted they didn't want to spend 50 to $80 for, I mean, how did it even get to that point where something so simple didn't get implemented? It's amazing in organizations that the answers are pretty basic, but yet people aren't looking at them. They're not really respecting the employees. Um, at first, let's step back just a little bit. Employees often go in and say, let's make this change. Let's make that change. And they give it to their immediate supervisor. They say hi to the boss. Hey, I've got these ideas. And they get turned down, turned down, turned down. And after about the fourth or fifth time, yeah, they don't bother. Eh, yeah. they, they, you know, the organization, the leadership has taught them 
we don't care what your thoughts are. Mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah, they'd ask for a timer for, I, I don't know, six months, eight months, maybe a year. And that was me, it was brain dead, just get them a stupid timer. Yeah. <laughs> um, but they needed the stupid consultant to say, hey, we, we need a, a timer here. And sometimes like, that's an easy one, sometimes a little bit tougher. Yeah. But, um, so yeah, it's management had taught the employees, shut up, we don't need to listen to you. Okay. Well, and that, that's actually a really good point because mm -hmm. something that Dirk and I both noticed in your articles we, as we begin to look mm -hmm. at it and before we even publish it was this idea that we wanted to flesh out this idea of, of truth and mm -hmm. why you need truth from your employees and, yes. and how you help employees not fear retribution. I mean, sometimes employees will know something is fouled up in the process and they're like, geez, I, this could cost me my job. I, I maybe shouldn't say anything about this. <laughs> right. So how do you overcome that? That is, sometimes it's very easy. If, if the organization is open to change, it can be a one or two step process. If it's not, it can be a six month process. Uh, for instance, I was meeting with a client yesterday and the management structure there is really ingrained. They're very structured. Uh, one person in particular does not want to change. So I was telling the CEO, it's going to take us three or four months just to get this one main manager just to be open to new ideas. And so it starts from having them listen to us, opening up a dialogue and saying, what if we were to do this? What if we were to ask the employees uh, what their thoughts are? And so it's a very slow process. In other organizations, a uh, client I worked with earlier in the week, it was very quick. We need to make some major changes to the organization. The industry is shrinking. We need to pull a trigger on a few things. You know, in two weeks, we're having a strategic planning meeting and we're gonna restructure. And so in that organization is very quick. Boom, let's go, we're gonna knock out a plan and then we'll take that plan again and how do we implement that into action and new behaviors? How do we change the organization, but with behaviors and habits? So you're saying, if I'm understanding you properly, mm -hmm. crisis actually leads to, leads to this easier than just a stable, um, stable company. So, but I mean, really, if you're stable, you have to be looking at these things too. I mean, if you have a workforce mm -hmm. that's not owning up to what's really going on, even if you're stable, you need to know that. You need to uncover those issues because you may quickly not be stable, right? So right. how do you do that? How do you, in good times or solid times, how do you ping for those things? How do you probe for well, that? Let me, let me answer that first with saying the 80-20 rule. 20% 20 of the organizations out there are doing a good job and they're being proactive and they're constantly monitoring and they're opening up the conversations with their employees and their management structure. And where there's a challenge with a, a manager who's poor, they do the professional development, they coach, they counsel, or they terminate. Okay, so they have their processes in place. Sure. And those are the GEs of the world, mm -hmm. okay? And other great companies who are on it, they're pushing. The other 80% are, there, there's a lot of reasons for it, but usually they're behind the eight ball. So when I come in, they're in firefighting mode. So even though they want to make changes, we don't have time. We're fighting a fire today and we're just trying to stay ahead of the fire that's right nipping at us. And so typically what happens when I come in is that the fire has gotten so big, okay, we have to do something about that. And oddly enough, the way, way you have to change that is let's stop for a moment, let's really regroup, figure out what the real problem is instead of just shooting from the hip all the time. And again, we create a plan and then we start moving it and we measure it, okay? Yeah. But it has to come from the people, it has to come from the group and I'm amazed that the answers are there. Every organization has the answers within them. They're just not pulling it out of the employees properly and I think I mentioned that in our last segment. It's there, we just need to have the conversation. Yeah, having the conversations is always important. That's what we all do, really. It right. We all really want to have conversations with the people that are doing yeah. the work. And, and But on. sometimes people don't know how to have the conversation, or when they do, it comes out wrong. And that's where you need, one, the objective person, or you need to be able to pull yourself away to where the emotions aren't involved. You need to learn some new skills on how to um, introduce the conversation and put some of this stuff behind you that that builds up between people who work with each other every day and that's why sometimes it is important to have that objective person come in and say okay let's have this conversation and I'm going to kind of facilitate and um, because I hear what you're saying and what you're saying and you, go, you guys are saying the same thing but you're not hearing each other right. you're, right. you're still having the fight that you had six months ago. Okay. It's, it's funny that you have to bring in a consultant from the outside to, to, to tell people what they 
basically already know. <laughs> you know, they, <laughs> I mean, they know, but interestingly <laughs> enough, uh, the CEOs with yesterday, she said, I said, do you really want to go through with this? It's going to be tough. And she goes, I know we need to, but it's scary. And I go, yeah, I know. I do the same <laughs> thing with me because I'll, I'll be making changes in my life and I'll hit that wall. It happened two nights ago and I thought, oh no, I need to take my own advice. Yeah. yeah. You know, and I have that choice. You can go left or you can go right. And I love going left, yeah. but it hasn't been working <laughs> for me. Okay, let's go right. Well, you know, you, you, you know when it's scary <laughs> and the energy's there, you know it's the right thing. When right. You have that, that risk involved that you know you have yeah. to do. Well, I think, go ahead. I was going to say, Kelly, you know, we're, we're actually out of time. Ooh. But, I, I, you know, that was a quick 10 minutes. But, you know, we want to have you back again. Okay. This has been a couple of great segments. I think oh, yeah. Dirk, you'd agree. And, yep. uh, you know, we've, we've got, done a couple of, of, of steps on, on the organizational building blocks. We'll continue to do that. Right. We'll bring you back. Thanks. Yep. Sounds Kelly, good. thanks again. Good seeing being you. Here. Thank All you. Right. Thanks, Thank you.